So today let us start the session. We have again a very eminent personality from Anna University as you can see on the screen here. We have Professor S. Murthy Babu sir with us. So sir is Professor Crystal Growth Center and he is also the additional registrar of Anna University. We are very glad to have you sir. So we want to introduce you with the kind of research profile that you have created. Uh, it's a pride for Anna University also. So sir has published around more than 150 journal articles, book chapters, books, conference proceedings. He has around 2,185 citations. So his H index is 23. So now all this might sound like numbers to you whenever we say these things. But when you become researchers after you finish your PhD, when you want to apply for some higher positions or even in recruitment, all these things are becoming mandatory now. So you will have to pay attention to your own H index, how you create all this. So there is a huge uh, profile that is available for sir. But sir has told us we'll start sharp at 9.30. So I request our director, Umarani Madam, to welcome sir with a bunch of flowers. Please, sir. Please accept this token of our love and appreciation for your presence here. Thanks a lot for your presence, sir. We'll start the session now. First of all, good morning to all. Yeah. My sincere thanks to Director Ma'am, Director Center for Research, for inviting me to give you a lecture for you all. <coughs> I basically uh, from physics, I did a PhD in uh, chemistry, and <laughs> working uh, in an interdisciplinary center, Crystal Growth Center. Uh, I have uh, arranged the slides whatever the slides, right, and uh, three parts. One in the first part, introductory part, pure introductory, because I know the audience uh, is mixed, balanced from all sorts of engineering to science to management, because this is uh, induction program. So introduction, very brief, but elaborate in the sense of the particular topic, materials, and then the second part, uh, I, I plan to discuss the salient features of commercial uh, materials, which will form 1%, less than 1% of the materials being investigated all over, but which find applications in 99% of commercial value, the second part. The third part, all right, I am from an university and Crystal Growth Center, right, this is uh, one of the best opportunity for me to showcase our own center, the facilities at our center, which may be useful to you, right? So I try to showcase whatever facilities. We have very good facility, very good facility for material synthesis as well as for material characterization. So I try to highlight. So I have divided the lecture into three parts, introductory part, silent features of the materials, which may be helpful to all sorts of engineering and science uh, researchers. And then the third part, mainly about our center and facilities at our center, which may be useful, okay? Okay, the material age, uh, we can uh, start from uh, Stone Age. Uh, then uh, <coughs> Bronze Age, uh, Iron Age, Polymer Age, or in, in between uh, you have other uh, concrete or steel, and then Silicon. Now we are in the Information Age. The material science, Right, materials, study of materials basically is processing structure and properties and performance of uh, materials. Uh, I try to go a little bit fast on this because this is an introduction, right? Yes. The Stone Age, uh, before BC 3000, uh, beginning of life, is usually occurred materials with only changes in shape, shape which means wood or whatever available on that. Uh, age, right? They try to change the shape and uh, they made it usage. But now, again, uh, in the present age also, we try to have uh, nanomaterials, right? Gold or silver or whatever uh, nanomaterials. We try to change the shape and size and we try to have many 
applications the purpose right whatever application okay then with the bronze age right uh 3000 bc to 1200 bc right that ability to modify the materials by using heat annealing or uh, refining chemical modification mechanical deformation again right now we try to modify uh, the material properties right by annealing or heating or mechanical work also chemical uh, work these are all uh, again nano particles of uh, different sizes which exhibit fluorescence from blue uh, to red then came uh, iron age uh, from 1200 bc to present in, in which you have the ability to heat it at high temperature and control uh, different microstructure as well as uh, the properties uh, with specific properties and design right similarly we we try to this is alumina i tried to come uh, uh, the purpose of alumina or applications of alumina in subsequent slides right alumina you can see uh, when you have single crystalline form alumina it is transparent this is polycrystalline and this is amorphous right you you can play with heat treatment this is uh, heat treatment of uh, 2000 degrees celsius uh, these are all uh, just compacted with hydrostatic press right we can change the optical and other properties specific properties right by making heat treatment yeah plastic age uh, which, which 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 is very very large with polymer age uh, uh, which, which finds very very uh, significant applications in terms of space or defense or uh, whatever thing you can see uh, this is uh, boeing uh, 787 body almost 90% of the body is made of polymer Th these are all uh, columbia and uh, endeavor from Na nasa thing which again are made of uh, polymer uh, i try to come on our two slides about these polymers also right then most importantly silicon age which, which led to information uh, age right whatever uh, silicon I, I, i able to control again here alloying and uh, make all sorts of thin films nano or whatever whatever material uh, shape and size uh, which find applications you can see uh, everything uh, with the silicon age then comes uh, at present uh, world which which uh, revolves around uh, nanotechnology biotechnology uh, energy environment materials which are, which are materials involved in uh, all these thing information uh, uh technology right uh about this uh, nano uh, technology i tried to come a uh, little later with uh, some details about bio also uh, i try to uh, give insight about energy and environment i am not going to talk uh, more about information but materials which uh, i try to discuss right where well, i'll find uh, will be useful for information technology also right so this is uh, about uh, materials which uh, uh, are uh, find or which, which can be traced from a human body human thing you can see this is the whole body composition of the human body right 65% of the body right is only oxygen oxygen and then 10% uh, hydrogen 5% nitrogen uh 18% carbon which are all uh, materials uh in the human body and the distribution of uh, elements all over the earth or sea or atmosphere you can see right uh, these are all the thing only three prominent uh, materials are uh, uh, find with, with a human uh, body oxygen hydrogen and uh, carbon and uh, most of the applications most of the applications right most of the applications are from carbon are uh, oxides right oxides and uh, joke uh, the, the joke my our own uh, colleague uh, used to uh, comment that when you calculate uh, the cost of 65% oxygen nitrogen or carbon it may not go more than 10 rupees the human uh, material value uh, is not more than 10 rupees with the composition <laughs> of uh, elements uh coming to the nano uh, uh technology right uh, this is lotus uh, leaf 
uh, this is expanded or, uh, with a microscope, right? a scanning electron microscope. Uh, this is a view of a uh, lotus leaf and then still going to the transmission electron microscope view of a cell uh, uh, in the lo lotus leaf, you can see, right? So this cell uh, has uh, a uh, contact angle of uh, more than 90 degree. So whatever uh, water, right, droplets, whatever uh, uh, liquid droplets which go there onto the leaf, right, it becomes hydrophobic, right? So when, once, once you want to design something, you, you have to go to the nano level, not to the micro level, even to the nano level, so that uh, you can uh, understand, uh, research, uh, understand what is what. Uh, the beauty of uh, lotus leaf is that the top is hydrophobic, the bottom is also hydrophobic, right? If you have a uh, lotus leaf onto the pond, right, when the water level uh, goes up, it also goes up. It doesn't uh, uh, go down, right? It goes up. Also, whatever water on the top, right, doesn't adhere, right, to the surface of uh, leaf, it will come down. So this is hydrophobic nature. This hydrophobic nature, by nature, by nature, comes with uh, this <coughs> obtuse angle of contact, right? Which which was due to the cell uh, at the na nano level. Uh, this is one of the classic example of uh, nature related to nanotechnology. Similarly, uh, man-made thing, we, we, which, which is uh, given for nanotechnology, a classic example again from the uh, literature, right? This is Kudipnar, uh, right? The particles, once uh, uh, mainly made of iron, iron, right? When they evaluated uh, uh, the iron content, right? D didn't rest, didn't make iron oxide. Right, and also compacted like anything, and compacted like anything with a fluid, a nature of fluid nobody knows, right? It's like this, and it gives you a kind of a nano particle size with obtuse angle, and it is stable for more than a thousand years, right? Without rusting, without uh, any problem, right? So, again, they researched, they, they had an idea about how to. Uh, make nano, nano, nano thousand years back, right? And they uh, de developed this uh, uh, rust-free iron and made this. Yeah. So again, I come for uh, a natural thing. This is uh, <coughs> uh, token beak, and uh, uh, this is nothing. Um, but it try to uh, strike the wood very, very fast, very, very fast to make a hole. Right? If you are making so much fast, right? If, even if you are uh, whatever uh, available uh, drilling machines, right? The drilling bit will de be destroyed. But this uh, neck or uh, nose is, is not uh, affected with even uh, uh, repeated uh, drilling of wood by this by nose of this uh, token beak. Uh, why? It is mainly made of uh, material uh, polymer keratin, but the exterior of the keratin uh, is very, very strong. The interior all right, uh, is membrane-like and uh, it has got uh, almost nano-sized uh, bony fibers. So whatever uh, pressure uh, the token beak puts in onto the wood, right, it has been absorbed, very much absorbed uh, by the nanofibers and th th there will be no problem uh, for the neck or uh, nose of that token beak. This is again from nature. Ah, this is again mechanical, uh, classical slide. Uh, this is not upside down. It has been deliberately made, right? An ant, ant, right, carries uh, 100 times its weight on its uh, nose, right? How, right? Because th this has just been, uh, I mean, again, done uh, some kind of uh, evaluation with uh, uh, research, research, this is natural research. And uh, they are uh, able to uh, understand that this ant, uh, they try to change the size and shape of their pads and they enable them mechanically carry, mechanically carry more than 100 times weight of its uh, feet, pad, right? In a similar way, I try to come on the subsequent slides about 
an artificial growth when we uh, do uh, silicon growth, right? Uh, I try to explain by artificial thing. So, nature gives you a very good interesting uh, uh, phenomena about the uh, materials. I, I introduced whatever small part of our introduction about the materials, mainly uh, on carbon, polymers, and other uh, materials, which are finding very good uh, commercial applications. So, in, in, uh, in my uh, uh, second part, right, I try to uh, uh, highlight about carbon, especially uh, graphene and the graphene based uh, processes, silicon, uh, sapphire, one or two slides about uh, sapphire, titania, titanium oxide. <coughs> And other oxides, right? These materials almost find, almost find 99% of applications in a commercial uh, way, commercial way. But they may not uh, be less, maybe less than point one or uh, was very very trace of uh, the materials being investigated, researched, right? All over. There are so many material systems, materials researched, but. These are all the small batch of materials which find applications. I try to uh, give some insight about uh, all these applications and finally I try to go for uh, characterization tools which we are uh, making at uh, Crystal Growth Center. Uh, this is about carbon. This carbon, uh, you can uh, either prefer bulk carbon or uh, nano uh, scale uh, carbon, right? This carbon, uh, this is graphite in the pencil tip, it is graphite, uh, it is a diamond. Uh, it is C60 and uh, it is a carbon uh, nanotube. Everything is carbon. Everything is carbon. All right. Graphite or uh, nanotube, everything is carbon. Right. Only difference is it's structural. Right. It is polymorphic. Right. One is having uh, bulk, the other one is nano. How we prepare, I try to come later. Uh, the beauty when you go for uh, application side, our property side is a diamond is an insulator graphite is metallic character and buckminster fullerene c60 is superconducting right but they are all just carbon okay so this is polymorphism with respect to carbon and with respect to carbon and nanotube right you can have three different uh, morphologies of polymorphism okay the armchair zigzag or chiral. These are three different polymorphism of carbon nanotubes again which is only a carbon right. When you, this is graphene, this is graphene right. When you fold right just rotate it right it gives you armchair which gives you a semiconducting property right. If you fold uh, on the other side right 90 degrees right you end up with zigzag which gives you metallic character right. Uh, when you rotate at an angle, instead of just folding, right, if you rotate and file it with an angle, right, it gives you chirality and which is semi-metal. The same graphene, graphene, which is made of carbon, all right, graphene sheet, right, when you fold it or rotate it, right, you can have either armchair, chiral or zigzag and we end up with metallic, semiconductor or semiconducting, all right. So, the same carbon, you, you can make it different purpose, different properties. And in the carbon nanotube also, right? I, I, I uh, discuss two, two or three slides about carbon and then go for other uh, material. The carbon nanotube also, you can see the size, right? Variation in size and its strength, uh, conductivity, the cost, we forget about the cost, right? It finds lot of lot of applications, lot of applications, right? Uh, with respect to electronics, or with respect to uh, uh, nanotechnology, or with respect to any any engineering area, right? Carbon uh, nanotubes or carbon-based materials find very good application. Uh, just say rush through uh, how one can prepare uh, graphene or graphene-based materials, right? Uh, this is a simple molecular structure of uh, uh, graphene. And this is HR uh, TEM image of uh, uh, graphene. This is where I informed you earlier, right? When you fold it, you try to get nanotubes. And when you stack it, uh, the same graphene, this is graphene. The top one is graphene sheet, full sheet, graphene sheet, right? If you have layers of graphene 
and intercalating oxygen are some functional materials inside the graphene sheet right you make it graphite this is graphite uh, the last one is graphite this is c60 uh, this is nanotubes okay simple graphene uh, yeah so you can have either single walled or multi walled also and also uh, uh, different inter uh, related uh, structures c60 70 or uh, more than uh, other uh, uh, molecules uh, number of molecules and you can make it very big ball or uh, uh, tubes and most of the graphene are uh, prepared either by top down approach or, approach or bottom up approach in the top down it is mainly by exfoliation uh, in the bottom up uh, mainly uh, uh, by organic synthesis or uh, uh, by humor uh, processes uh, exfoliation or intercalation or uh, uh, by humor's process uh, exfoliation is very very simple process i try to show the video if uh, the time uh, permits right uh, just so you have an ionic uh, liquid uh, you try to take a graphitic rod which is naturally available and uh, try to uh, have uh, apply some uh, standard potential i uh, try to peel off or exfoliate and uh, try to purify it uh, or filter it out you try to get graphene very easily by exfoliation and then uh, uh, this is a common method laboratory uh, method called hammer's process we try to uh, oxidize first and then reduce it with potassium permanganate or perchlorate or nitric acid so that you, you can have uh, re first initially you will have reduced graphene a uh, graphite graphite oxide then uh, for purification you will end up with uh, graphene sheets uh, i said about carbon carbon not only directly uh, find applications but also when you uh, dope this carbon with iron right uh, you can have all sorts of uh, steels carbon incorporated uh, iron and uh, you can see uh, uh, the nomenclatures this is uh, four uh, numbered the first two number gave uh, alloy and the second uh, give white percentage of carbon and the fourth one uh, standard even a standard so you you have different uh, carbon uh, uh, percentage in uh, iron and different forms of steel which find uh, applications applications of carbon uh, why why you have to change carbon content right when you uh, change carbon content and do mechanical work and do heat treatment uh, lying and you will have different varieties of uh, properties in steel when you have carbon in steel similarly whenever whenever uh, you, you have change in uh, structure change in structure i showed about diamond graphite uh, as well as buck pencil fullerene right whenever you have change in structure it always lead to change in properties all right you can see classic example of gold right this is bulk gold right and this is nano gold you can see the change in properties of melting point from 1370 de degree kelvin to uh, 650 kelvin change change in properties almost can it become uh, this is conducting this is insulating so change in properties with change in structure or change in shape okay uh, i said about uh, ant carrying ant carrying 100 times its weight 100 times its weight uh, when uh, changes uh, shape or uh, size uh, this is not natural this is artificial right uh, this is uh, uh, growth of uh, silicon natural uh, I mean, um, silicon from by the process called zakrasky right and you can see this is uh, seed and uh, this is grown crystal you, you, you can't uh, 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 understand uh, 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 the process or uh, believe the process that this i mean the weight of the seed is few grams few grams right few grams and the weight of the crystal right it carries you know how much any idea so two tons two tons right the small the small weight of the seed carries two tons of silicon this is artificial process by a process called zakralski uh, and uh, because of this seeding characteristics and making the necking and other processes right it is able to uh, uh, carry so much weight two tons of silicon with few grams of seed uh, i i have a sample which which we have already grown here here the seed is only uh, milligrams this is silicon 
which we have uh, uh, grown at uh, our laboratory. You can see this, this, this is almost uh, uh, more than 2 kgs of uh, weight. And the seed, you may, may be, may we have cut the seed initially. The seed is only few milligrams, right? So by process necking and other processing, we are able to uh, make it very good uh, bowl of uh, silicon. Right? Similar process, say the Klatsky process, but we do not have uh, charging of two times, but it is only 8, eight kg charge and we are able to grow 2 kg. And uh, as I said, uh, with changing the shape and size right, of uh, the necking process, I tried to show the video also if uh, I find uh, time, uh, we are able to make a very good uh, uh, carrying weight and also growth process. This silicon, silicon, right, when it is cut, polished and made wafer, find all sorts of applications, electronic applications. Whatever, whatever applications uh, you find, right, silicon will be part of it, right. So this is one of the wafers which uh, we are able to make it. Uh, uh, during break you can see, right, that from our own uh, bowl, right, which, which will find application in uh, solar cell. Uh, our aim is only for uh, solar cell, not more than that, because uh, when you want to have uh, uh, electronic applications, you, you need to have high pure uh, silicon. Uh, th this uh, solar cell materials you can make either with the metallurgical grade or solar grade uh, silicon. So the silicon which we, we have grown is not so high pure. Uh, I tried to come the uh, subsequent part what what I mean by high pure and what are the applications of high pure silicon. Uh, this is the one uh, uh, which uh, the processing uh, again this is seed went to the melt and then uh, we try to make uh, uh, necking uh, we try to carry whatever large weight right we try to understand what are the surface tensions what are all the buoyancies and uh, and uh, idea of making an interface once we have a convex right we can carry if you are concave it will come down okay yeah so this is about uh, purity uh, uh, People who are uh, familiar with uh, electronics or semiconductor, you may be understanding Moore's law, right? Moore's law, okay? So Moore's law uh, states that you, you can multiple of uh, device structures, the capacity you can increase to a limited way, right? Not more than a particular way. It is a Moore's law. But once you have high purity silicon, high purity silicon, right? You can increase, right, the capacity to any level. Here you can see, this is 1956 IBM, just whatever uh, you have pen drive like thing you know, this is the size of the pen drive, the so storage device, uh, which is only 5 MB, hard, 5 MB hard drive, but uh, you can see the size, right, in 1956, 1956. Then the people invested the research, right, only through research, they researched, right, purification of silicon. Only silicon, everything is silicon, even this is silicon and this is also silicon, right? They are able to have a device by Intel and now SanDisk, right? They are able to have 1.26 inch, 1.26 inch device which can store 2 terabytes. You can see 5 MB with this size and 2 TB, the smaller size, right? Only because purification of silicon, right? The problem with silicon is that oxygen in silicon, the silicon is uh, uh, derived from silica, SiO2, right? We try to remove oxygen and we try to uh, purify silicon, right? Whatever silicon, right, it is not so easy to uh, uh, remove uh, oxygen. But once you expose to atmosphere, you try to attract oxygen, okay? The removal of oxygen in silicon is a tricky part, okay? So they are able to, Intel and uh, um, other groups, they are able to uh, purify to such a level that they are uh, able to make a device, uh, 2 TB. Now they are uh, still increasing, uh, I don't know, uh, today's uh, storage capacity, they might have gone to 5 TB also on the laboratory scale, but commercially they are able to come with uh, 2 TB with 1.26 uh, inch pure silicon. Okay. Uh, this is again another uh, 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 material which we which find application uh, commercially is uh, sapphire AL203. 
right commercial name is uh, sapphire chemical name is uh, al2o3 right uh, it is mainly produced by uh, several processes one of the processes which it is produced is zakraski and also the other process we call it as chiropolis right we try to have a bowl though uh, the bowl you can see a very large uh, size uh, uh, bowl uh, here right the whole bowl may not be useful for uh, substrate or uh, uh, devices right we try to core uh, coring the process is called coring and uh, uh, we try to get uh, the bowl uh, like this uh, the center part uh, like this and then it has to be sliced it has to be sliced usually when you are uh, slicing right if the material is soft material is soft right you can make uh, a harder blade or uh, uh, cutting wire you can slice it sapphire is one of the hardest it is not so easy to slice it right even if you make a diamond cutting diamond is the hardest one so even if you make a diamond cutting or a diamond wire right it is not so easy so the coring itself is a complicated process and then dicing still complicated and after that this sapphire exists in uh, two different uh, planes either it will have a a plane cut or a c plane cut crystallographic thing i tried to come uh, on the final part so the commercial applications you will also always need a c plane so orienting orienting right uh, it is again a little bit tricky part so the sapphire grown as a bowl and then cored with a coring machine and then cut or sliced and then oriented and made wafers these wafers then go as a device this is some kind of leds all leds commercially available all leds light emitting diodes light emitting diodes or laser diodes right use sapphire as substrate sapphire as substrate okay you can see the applications before going uh, to the cutting right one has to find is there any defects with the material you can see what are the de uh, defects inclusions bubbles twinning uh, deformation within the even if you grow and cut it you, you may end up with a lot of defects the whole bowl may not be useful so you have to grow defect free defect free and you have to orient and cut for any fruitful applications this is one of the classic material the sapphire right we studied carbon silicon and sapphire the next one is titania those oh, those who do uh, some kind of environmental uh, studies right they may know about titania titanium dioxide one of the classic catalysis catalytic material photocatalytic material is titanium oxide which i uh, find applications in close to visible not in visible range it is uv range right it absorbs light and purifies whatever right this titania one can prepare this is about a photocatalytic uh, reaction so it absorbs uv and uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, impurities uh, it try to remove whatever dyes or uh, in a chemical industry uh, leather industry or textile industry right purification of uh, effluents right usually done with titanium oxide so you try to react and with light with light photo uh, it, it may be used as a catalyst and it try to give you a product uh, which may not be harmful to the environment so this titania also find applications in medical field whatever whatever uh, uh, bone replacement materials are mainly made of uh, titanium alloys titanium based alloys titanium coated alloys all right so this titania find applications uh, in medical field also and uh, of late uh, very good uh, solar cells are made uh, using this titanium dioxide absorbents okay so this is about uh, photocatalytic you, you can see this is methylene blue uh, purified almost 95% uh, uh, rhodamine b oh it's not moving yeah this is uh, rhodamine b again uh, purified uh, 85 uh, more than 85 percent using titanium oxide uh, now i come for uh, uh, applications <coughs> of the material i said about silicon 
this is uh, uh, for energy, solar cells, right? This is again one of the classic slides from the literature. You can see uh, almost uh, uh, the energy received by the earth, right? And if you are able to absorb it uh, for one hour uh, and if you are able to convert it to energy, that will be sufficient for uh, one year usage all over the globe. So, most of the uh, solar cells, solar uh, applications, right, they use monocrystalline silicon or uh, polycrystalline silicon. But these are uh, other forms of uh, silicon. And uh, in the thin film form, uh, cadmium telluride, copper indium gallium uh, uh, sulfide or copper indium gallium selenide, and of late, uh, perovskites are uh, used in the solar cell applications. All these materials uh, okay, fall uh, within the uh, category of uh, uh, visible range absorption and uh, most of it, most of it are prepared uh, in the laboratories, not naturally occurring. So, th this is uh, revol evolution of uh, uh, energy, first generation, second generation, fourth generation, which comes from silicon, now uh, with a polymer, uh, methyl ammonium uh, based lead uh, iodide and other related polymers uh, are used as fourth generation, which, is, which, which will give you high efficiency, but stability is uh, not good. One of the uh, commercially viable, the best uh, uh, materials are only from silicon. Uh, just I try to uh, uh, go fast with uh, uh, other materials of, of uh, uh, solar cell applications, cadmium selenide, oh, one of the uh, material, anorganic material used for uh, solar cell. Uh, though uh, it has got uh, uh, limited applications, right, on the thin film thin form, form this cadmium selenide, cadmium telluride and titanium oxide. Uh, copper and DM gallium sulfide or copper and DM gallium selenide. These are all the materials very much used. Uh, these are synthesis processes uh, which, which give you uh, titanium. This is about titanium oxide. Even if you prepare titanium oxide directly, you can't use it. You have to make some kind of chemical uh, processing which are called Lehan exchange and also by electrochemical uh, uh, processes. And then uh, uh, by simple wet chemical process also one prepares uh, this is copper and sulfide um, from different surfactants uh, like oleolamine, oleic acid, ondodocanthial and other things. You can see the change in shape uh, from particles to rods to discs uh, to cylinder, uh, cylindrical uh, tubes, right? All these uh, right, changes its uh, properties, absorption rate and efficiency, everything you can change. This is again a uh, classic example of uh, how one can uh, have higher efficiency with a change in uh, shape and size. So I take this, this is uh, uh, one of the things which I wanted to convey. Uh, very, very simple process, right? Uh, this synthesis and everything, you can uh, easily make a condensed tube. Uh, this setup, this setup may not cost more than few thousands, 10,000 or not more than 10,000, right? One can do oh, what, whatever the research you want to do even with minimum amount or uh, maximum uh, uh, lakhs or crores or billions, uh, like silicon, right? If you want to have a two-ton uh, bowl and wafer, right, you may need uh, high investment. Uh, for smaller bowl and smaller wafers, right, you may not need uh, thing. So, the availability of funds or grants, right, doesn't uh, decide the uh, activity okay even with minimum amount minimum amount you can plan but may, n may not be it, it can be scalable but you can do only laboratory scale may not be on a commercial scale but research you can do uh, with whatever available uh, facilities and available uh, grant so this we, this is everything we are doing at uh, crystal growth center simple process we are able to control uh, different sizes okay uh, this is again alumina, Al2O3, uh, uh, this is uh, not s sapphire, it's a template, right? We try to make uh, aluminium and try to make, uh, have an anodic oxidation uh, process. We try to have a template, uh, how we make, we, we try to, this is a template, 
all right it's a kind of uh, uh, network like thing so we try to etch it through anodic oxidation we try to make template and we try to uh, have uh, deposits within the uh, folds or pores of a template and we try to go for device structures okay you can see this is cadmium telluride uh, free standing cadmium telluride within uh, alumina uh, template which find application in uh, solar cell okay so this is uh, again uh, a uh, simple process you try to have a triton extended which is surfactant you try to uh, form as a cylindrical one with a hole and uh, we try to have this uh, in a solution and we try to make use of electro chemical process to fill whatever hole and then we try to etch the surface and try to have a free standing process very very simple process again but it has to be optimized uh, so far i have discussed about uh, solar cells right there are uh, materials again now to harvest waste energy wherever you have thermal energy wastage of energy right you can harvest it and convert it into an electrical energy by uh, materials thermo electric materials so which converts thermal energy into electrical energy the materials uh, uh, you have to prepare an n type and p type and you have to make uh, like this it uses seebeck effect and peltier effect right so physical effect and converts thermal energy into electrical energy there are so many materials right the application side it, it finds most of the applications with the defense and uh, uh, whatever remote area uh, applications as well as in uh, 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 space so these are all some of the materials based on telluride sulfate selenides and also the recently oxides right uh, which find application uh, this is the uh, state of the art now commercially only telluride based lead telluride or uh, bismuth selenide telluride bismuth telluride based devices for thermoelectric uh yeah i try to come uh, i try to skip uh oh, most of the parts that i have because these are all uh, yeah this is about uh, application of nanomaterials in uh, environment or civil engineering because uh, if i more focus on physics or chemistry or synthesis i think it may not be uh, interesting right it will be boring just i come for some kind of engineering and then uh, i try to go for other engineering you can see uh, uh, here titanium oxide uh, atro structure silver silver bromide and titanium oxide uh, all in nano form is a very good absorbent of light a very good absorbent of light and cleans the surface instantaneously right with the photocatalytic process and also uh, you can have a silica sio2 uh, and other uh, uh, nanoparticles nanoparticles based on titanium oxide silver and sio2 and you can have a, a ultra high performing concretes right it is made of sand gravel for water plus nano silica uh, i think uh, i don't know whether you are able to see this uh, nano silica i try to come how one can prepare nano silica also it is not so difficult to prepare nano silica it is easy to prepare nano silica and if you put nano silica into your concrete right the setting as well as the performance is very high ultra high performance right micro silica gives you high performance but uh, without silica it is ordinary concrete when you have a nano silica it, it can give you high performance concrete uh the application of this uh, materials right very much useful for purification of water also in any 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 place i try to give an insight uh, about that also in the subsequent slide so this is how uh, a glass surface with transparent coating of tio2 nano tio2 not normal tio2 right cleans you can see the surface uh, without nano uh, tio2 coating and this is the same surface with uh, uh, nano uh, they were to coating and you can see with the uh, sunlight it try to clean uh i uh, give uh, some information about carbon uh, nanotubes this carbon nanotubes is electrically very very good conductor very good conductor electrically thermally right it try to ha have very good insulating capacity also the same nanotubes in the multiple nanotubes right it has been uh, used uh, in the buildings this is with respect to civil so i try to give instead about the thing for thermal uh, uh, shield 
in buildings right to have fire uh, retardants in buildings so this is the thing which which, which is made of uh, carbon nanotubes and it, it, it with the wall it, they to coat it and they try to uh, uh, make it as a thermal shield for a building also uh, this uh, tio2 uh, silica and uh, carbon nanotubes together right nano silica everything uh, makes uh, ultra high performing concretes and uh, civil applications with respect to environment the same uh, tio2 silica and other things i try to skip uh, this review of literature and uh, other things right a uh, contaminant uh, in any water uh, is organics bacteria in the gases from arsenic fluorine mercury heavy metals pesticides and salts right whatever whatever uh, water uh, impure water you can take it in field or uh, any place these are all the contaminants these contaminants has to be uh, removed for any portable applications right you can remove it using uh, carbon based nano adsorbents or carbon nanotubes or uh, metal based nano adsorbents or zeolites or even uh, nano silica or uh, nano titanium oxide uh, i try to give uh, uh, insight about one or two slides so either you can have a filter like membranes you can make membranes and filter it out all right 50% of impurity you can remove using this membrane uh, technology and also you can make zeolites uh, uh, it will absorb whatever impurities and also you can use magnetic uh, uh, thing you can remove uh, impurities but may not remove everything all right so you have to make combination of these materials systems so that you can have pure water okay so this is uh, uh, one of the simple thing developed uh, at iit madras by a chemical chemistry group uh, they use uh, uh, chitosan uh, fibers with aluminum hydroxide nanoparticle in a cage like you can see uh, and they try to filter it at the top and then uh, they also use uh, silver nanoparticles silver nanoparticles and uh, fe3o4 iron uh, uh, magnetite uh, uh, nanoparticles so that they try to uh, remove the water the water is also another problem also they remove uh, bacterial thing and you try to get uh, pure water the simple technology right but m- uses uh, materials and, and the nanoparticles uh, okay so they are <coughs> making it as a mantle like thing and they try to fit it into the mantle like uh, thing and then uh, or purge it they try to absorb whatever uh, impurities and uh, each uh, mantle is uh, you say one uh, removes heavy metals the other one removes water the other one uh, uh, removes whatever bacterial uh, thing so that you try to get a purity <coughs> which which is uh, portable so everything uses nanoparticles of silica or titania or iron uh, oxide or um, uh, silver right with uh, chitosan uh, this is <coughs> about making nanoparticles uh, 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 two or three slides about uh, synthesis it is a very simple process right you try to take uh, whatever uh, uh, silver and the nano parts <coughs> and try to uh, uh, have an uh, emulsification and uh, try to have a solution form try to uh, slide over uh, the substrate just hit it right uh, it will assemble uh, like a layer and then uh, whatever uh, substrate you want to take you try to put it and remove it right it is process is called lift off right you can get uh, very good uh, nanoparticles which which you can use it for uh, any kind of application this is about silver uh, nanoparticles similarly uh, this is templated process wherein uh, oh, wherein uh, you, you can prepare uh, usually all uh, single uh, metal elemental metals uh, uh, you can prepare with the templated process even with your compound right you can uh, process these uh metal silver or gold or uh, whatever metals right they find applications uh, very much in a single electronic device or uh, other uh, applications okay we can prepare fibers also all right well, these fibers i have shown some applications right uh, also uh, process if you are able to uh, make a pyrolytic solution of the material for example i have shown about zinc oxide or titania or silica right you try to make a polymeric uh, solution i try to inject with the uh, syringe right i apply a potential right this is simple example you, this is a syringe and wherein the polymer solution uh, uh, when you apply a voltage in the, from the top 
and uh, bottom electrode this is plate uh, the fibers will come and down <coughs> and uh, settles at the uh, plate these fibers right you can use it for uh, different applications right most of the bio bio related applications right they try to use uh, fiber I try, uh, uh, either in the drum or in the plate collector the process is electro uh, spinning process the materials oxides zinc oxide titanium oxide or silicon oxide uh, even uh, hydroxy uh, apatite which, which you find uh, uh, for bone uh, replacements oh. is there any materials which will be useful in agriculture yeah because uh, uh, we, we try to find hi-fi sophisticated technology but uh, uh, right okay agriculture yes in the form of nano fertilizers right whatever whatever uh, fertilizers in which, which uh, uh, gives you nitrogen or uh, sulfur uh, right for example i have given manganese uh, carbonate uh, core uh, with polymers uh, and also zinc uh, uh, based fertilizers you, we try to change the size and shape right and the release release of nitrogen and uh, release of sulfur depending on uh, size and shape you can see uh, smart uh, release with the nano uh, in addition you try to use polymer or uh, zeolite for nitrogen sulfur or zinc uh, uh, release okay in the bio uh, for uh, drug delivery detection of cancer right whatever uh, this is because the biotechnology also a leading uh, area you can uh, see uh, this is a simple sensor uh, made of silicon uh, right we, we, which is used to detect uh, uh, lung cancer by an Israeli uh, group the simple uh, structure is like this right uh, they try to have a mono dispersed uh, magnetic particle and they try to uh, make uh, electronic device and then uh, just with the uh, whatever uh, uh, inhaled air breathe right uh, they try to identify with a marker, uh, sensing uh, a marker. Also, the same uh, sensing device they are able to make with carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotubes, and uh, uh, with a nano fiber, uh, they are able to check uh, with a mouse. And now, uh, human trial is in uh, process from a Israeli group. Again, carbon based on carbon. Yeah. Uh, though the slides are jumbling like uh, from uh, different thing but i try to highlight on materials uh, which are which are uh, silent uh, fine silent uh, applications from bio to nano to uh, electronics to whatever civil to environmental to energy whatever area uh, here again uh, of the bone right most of the bone is uh, carbonates right uh, strong you can see this man, this man, uh, uh, you, this is a sumo wrestler, uh, he weighs around 200 kg, close to 200 uh, kg. His leg, you can see, uh, right, it carries the whole uh, weight because uh, the uh, inner uh, uh, bone material, right, they, they try to check uh, uh, periodically and the content, if the content of carbonate in the bone material goes to uh, uh, below a normal level right you may not uh, withstand the weight right so the also the structure so this is a structure of uh, a bone right once you try to change the structure as well as the content uh, of the chemical uh, within the structure the size right so you, uh, you can accommodate whatever weight and uh, if it goes to uh, below a limit, right, it may not uh, accommodate. So again, carbonate, which, which comes uh, from carbon. Uh, this is again uh, about uh, uh, sensors, uh, DNA sensor, chemical sensor made from uh, carbon nanotube and uh, nanoparticles with gold uh, nanoparticles. Everything, organic uh, uh, based find, carbon based find, many. Uh, applications okay uh, I hope uh, I have given an insight about the materials carbon silicon sapphire 
titania oxides right most of the oxides okay uh, though uh, i have given uh, uh, salient features of uh, different materials i don't know uh, uh, how many of you have uh, idea about these materials but even if you have uh, other uh, materials working on other materials right you, you can find suitable applications if you try to change its properties through shape or size or modification uh, with heat treatment or mechanical uh, treatments okay uh, now i come with the facilities which uh, are available at uh, crystal grow center uh, and university this is these are the facilities available uh, for synthesis are making uh, uh, crystals for bulk right we have uh, uh, the kraski which i have already shown right with the seed we can have a growing uh, crystal uh, optical floating zone bridgeman flux bernoulli and other uh, processes most of you may not uh, be knowing the processes but still i try to highlight if some of you have interest right you can make use of the facilities Uh, by writing to me or uh, directly uh, coming over there and do some synthesis we try to uh, do uh, from melt process solution process or vapor process also uh, from bio materials to nano materials to bulk materials semiconductors but everything this is one of the characteristic uh, unique characteristic of the center is that uh, we are having facilities on par with any international laboratory for all Uh, uh growth processes vapor process solution process or melt process this is about uh, growth and uh, even if you uh, may not have interest with the growth if you are involved in any materials you may be uh, interested with this characterization facilities we have very good characterization facilities uh, for structural uh, characterization right we have powder xrd xa diffraction hr xrd i resolution xr diffraction and then for surface uh, evaluation as well as size and shape uh, uh, evaluation we have transmission electron microscope scanning electron microscope with uh, composition analysis edax energy dispersion x ray analysis and uh, we have uh, atomic force uh, microscope also this atomic force microscope uh, attached with nano intender with facility and then we have several uh, optical uh, microscope for polarizing microscopes uh, for uh, analysis of si uh, size and shape uh, spectroscopic characterization uh, we have very good facility for uv visible drs which means uh, optical spectroscopy uh, raman spectroscopy uh, ftir uh, infrared spectroscopy and then uh, one of the Uh, classic equipment dynamic light scattering wherein we try to measure the size uh, as well as measure the zeta potential uh, i tried to give insight about these facilities in the subsequent slides okay and also we have very good facility for fluorescence fluorimeter with excitation emission as well as photo uh, uh, luminescence characterization for electrical we have impedance measurement system as well as all effect um, uh, measurement system and then uh, uh, iv uh, or cv Uh, measurement system uh, including uh, emission from sun simulator uh, and also we have nano harness as well as micro harness uh, system uh, we are directly supported by ugc under ugc uh, national facility scheme wherein any any researcher any researcher uh, can write a proposal to us uh, based on the proposal we can invite and we will provide all the facilities uh, without any cost if you are not coming under this uh, facility you may have to pay nominal charges to carry out all this uh, characterization analysis uh, and also we, we have uh, uh, with respect to nano with respect to nano these are all some of the processes which uh, uh, we have at uh, uh, crystal growth center for top down approaches as well as for bottom up uh, approaches uh, so i said uh, i try to show cars uh, our uh, facilities this is uh, a uh, new addition one of the classic uh, facility at our uh, center for the growth of uh, gallium oxide uh, bulk uh, crystals and uh, wafers for high power electronic uh, devices right most of the power electronic devices uh, i mean power electronic devices all diodes transistors uh, whatever uh, fets mosfets mesfets whatever uh, device structures right 
these are all uh, coming under power electronic device useful in uh, electric vehicles and for other applications space as well as uh, defense applications uh, in the first generation right uh, the materials are from silicon or germanium uh, the most most uh, advantages material is diamond but you know the cost of uh, diamond also getting diamond so the second preferred uh, material is gallium oxide uh, with uh, massive funding from uh, drdo we are able to uh, get this uh, gallium oxide it's not so easy to prepare uh, uh, gallium oxide we are able to prepare with uh, uh, strong support uh, from the government of india and also we are able to uh, make slices of it right preparing one thing making slices along particular orientation and making a device we are able to make device also using this gallium uh, oxide single crystals right uh, i tried to skip uh, but the advantage uh, of gallium oxide over silicon or other existing thing is that you can have a very very thin uh, device structure you can see silicon silicon ox carbide and gallium oxide based uh, device structures you can see small thin which which is 600 times uh, thinner than other silicon is 600 times more thicker so this is thinner than a silicon device and the performance performance of the device is very very high performing device you can have using gallium oxide layer in a diode or transistor or a fet uh, i tried to skip about this uh, uh, just uh, this is all the facilities uh, at our center for growing uh, this is a process which uh, i have shown uh, earlier with uh, zakraski so you try to make a neck once you have a neck then only you can carry uh, seeding growing and uh, removing all uh, matters right if you do not optimize the process uh, you, you cannot grow a single crystal transparent material right i have a video but if time permits i try to show uh, thing yeah this this is uh, uh, again uh, uh, even if you have optimized the process you always uh, end up with some kind of trouble during growth this is uh, gallium oxide ga2o3 whenever you melt it the melting temperature is 2000 degrees centigrade whenever you melt it there is always a possibility for escape of uh, oxygen you try to put counter uh, oxygen to keep this oxide stable and even when this counter oxygen right there is a possibility this is escaping of uh, oxygen from the surface when i show the video uh, you, you will understand right so it's uh, stability of the material right at 2000 degrees in the molten state is a tricky problem uh, so this is some of the crystals which we have grown and made uh, uh, wafers and also uh, uh, device uh, structures based on gallium oxide uh, i try to skip the fundamentals of uh, uh, processes uh, and uh, Oh, 10 30 30 minutes uh, uh diffraction uh, i try to go uh, for the machine which which we have at uh, uh, crystal glass center i try to explain what one can do with uh, x-ray diffraction uh, any material any material the first characterization one does with the material is x-ray diffraction so you have to understand the grown uh, material or the developed material or synthesis material whatever material you have uh, developed whether it is crystalline whether it is amorphous or whether it is polycrystalline right the fundamental character of the material one understand with xrd right powder xrd you try to either you try to make a, a film or powder or even uh, if you have a bowl right you try to keep it into the machine and try to understand the characteristics so it uh, works basically on the brax law to decide it equal to n lambda and you try to keep uh, the material uh, i try to see uh, uh, go uh, for the device structures why you have to study these things right whatever whatever structural characteristics right it is anisotropic even cube is isotropic cube is isotropic because this is cube a is equal to b equal to c right cube is isotropic even in the cube even in the cube right you can see a cube edges you can have uh, diagonals face diagonals you can have body diagonals you can have all these three is not isotropic not isotropic right cube is isotropic right but cube edges face diagonals body diagonals it is not isotropic it is an isotropic similarly right if you have a octahedra or tetrahedra for example tio2 
T I O O. Right. Similarly, S I O two. S I O O. Right. How it is bound within the unit cell? Whether it uh, A L two O three. A L A L O O O. A L A L O O O. Okay. So how whether it is as a octahedra or a tetrahedra within this cubic unit cell? Right. It also changes property. Okay, so you have to understand whether it is isotropic, whether it is cubic, whether it is body diagonal or uh, face diagonal, and also whether it is tetrahedra or octahedra. How the structure is within this unit cell? Then only you can identify the properties along all the directions. Okay, so these things, right? You can understand only with powder X-ray diffraction. Okay, X-ray diffraction. So. Whether it is crystalline, liquid, or amorphous, right? Polycrystalline, right? You can understand with powder X-ray diffraction. So this is a machine, Pan Analytical Expo machine, which is available uh, at our center, Crystal Growth Center, wherein you put the sample. This is a sample holder. We try to put the sample holder. Uh, this is the source, X-ray source, and this is the detector which moves, right? We try to identify, and you, you have a X-ray diffractogram, diffractogram. 2 theta versus intensity and you, you can identify whether it is crystalline amorphous or what are the orientations and other uh, things which we can do right similarly we have a facility for hr xrd uh, high resolution x ray diffraction wherein if you have a single crystalline we try to rock it uh, this powder is two directional one only one detector one source right this hr xrd you can see this is a uh, uh, four uh, uh, dimensional one so we try to rotate the uh, substrate right we rotate the uh, detector and also uh, we try to rotate the source so this is right and we try to analyze this is hrx at high resolution x-ray diffraction mainly it will be omega or two omega or uh, highly resolved uh, theta okay so this is, uh, I try to give one or two examples and then I try to go for other uh, characterization. This is uh, one of the classic example how one can distinguish different phases of titanium oxide, right? Analytate, rutile or uh, brookite. Analytate, rutile or brookite. You can see uh, only small changes in theta and intensity, but this uh, XA will give you whether it is uh, anodized phase or brookite phase or rutile phase. Right, anodized phase will be uh, having some applications, rutile will be having some applications, brookite may not have the similar applications with the uh, titanium oxide. And also, uh, you can determine the size. I said size and shape changes properties, right? The, ch the size you can measure using a Scherer formula. Again, you have to change uh, the incident angle of X rays and then uh, you have to fit in to the formula, Scherer's formula, and you have to identify uh, using this is a X ray data you have to put it in size and we can change as uh, different sizes and we can find different applications uh, strain in the material also whether it is uh, uh, tensile strain or compressive strain or uniform strain non-uniform strain everything you can understand uh, uh, from x-ray diffraction simple x-ray uh, diffraction powder x-ray diffraction okay so nano crystalline or na non crystalline you can find okay so x-ray the fundamental character for uh, material you can analyze similarly the other uh, fundamental uh, property uh, which one, one, one used to find once you have some material any material uh, is surface morphology right the size or shape of morphology you can have uh, you can use optical microscope or uh, scanning uh, or uh, transmission or uh, AFM to find uh, what are all the surface characteristics, morphology on the surface, right? So I try to show uh, some of the morphology uh, which, which we got it from our own microscopes and then uh, this is scanning electron microscope uh, of a biological sample. Uh, this is silica, SIO2, SIO2, hollow, hollow spheres, SIO2 from transmission electron microscope and uh, this is a uh, twinning in a material uh, the material you know when a crystal grows right it is atomic periodic arrangement of atoms right it try to arrange uh, periodically and if there is some kind of uh, uh, defects right uh, one of the defects is twinning 
right one uh, atom going above or below uh, there will be no periodicity right it is a defect these defects you can analyze using uh, atomic force microscope this is simple uh, optical uh, microscope of uh, tubes nanotubes uh, from a substrate so you can have uh, imaging using optical microscope afm afm is a topography transmission electron uh, microscope which is a bulk one and a scanning electron uh, microscope purely surface but you can have a depth of focus also in a scanning electron uh, microscope uh, fortunately we have all the four at our uh, center optical microscope atomic force microscope scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope so this is uh, one called <coughs> J S M A C K scanning electron microscope EVA zero uh, EVA eighteen uh, at our center, and also we can uh, have uh, elemental elemental identification whatever material uh, you put in right. Also, not only see the surface right, you can see wha what are the compositions, what are the elements present in the material using E D A X analysis, and uh, also you can map it uh, how it is distributed. Uh, within the surface, right? The whole area of the surface. What are the elements? How they are distributed? We can uh, find with the EDX mapping. Okay. So I, we have shown in the screen uh, this ma mapping. Uh, uh, I think I, I can uh, skip uh, some kind of explanation, scientific explanation, and uh, go for. Uh, uh figure yeah you can see fracture surfaces uh, electronic devices fibers coating whatever whatever uh, even conducting non conducting biological you can see th the surfaces using scanning electron uh, microscope and uh, also uh, you can have a uh, surface as well as cross sectional uh, so y even if you have a, uh, surfaces you know you can make cross sectional one you can see the cross sectional view also right this is uh, the layered uh, thing uh, and which which we made it a cross sectional one so this is all uh, rods particles uh, almost almost dimension is nano dimensions up to sub micron uh, dimensions layers of, uh, of you can see under nanometer thick layer which we are we have seen seen uh, in a cross sectional view this is layer stack layers under nanometer layers but we made it a uh, cross-sectional uh, thing which we can see through ICM. Yeah. <coughs> also, this is electronic device. This is bio uh, uh, one uh, rods, tubes. Uh, this are everything is surface morphology. Uh, okay. So you can see uh, the focus of an optical microscope and the focus from uh, ICM and also uh, you can change the depth of focus this is uh, micro chinda yeah, um, what whatever other uh, bio organic one uh, tm we have tm tell us 200 is very good machine again uh, with our uh, center right we are able to make uh, many uh, this is a scan <coughs> electron uh, diffraction images uh, these are all the images which uh, made at our uh, center you can see this is a biology uh, mitochondria and this is twin boundaries which i said earlier so instead of uh, periodic thing there is variation in it thing this is a fiber single bond nanotube and uh, changes uh, this is different layers cross sectional layers again through uh, uh, tem this is high resolution and electron diffraction image uh, with, uh, with 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 our machine, uh, Telos uh, 200 days, we can make imaging. Uh, we can uh, study uh, is, um, crystallinity using selective area electron diffraction. Like X-ray diffraction, we can have electron diffraction in this machine, transmission electron microscope, and also uh, uh, we can image uh, the elemental mapping using this uh, transmission electron microscope. We can also find defects, point defects or surface defects. Yeah, this is uh, again uh, for our own samples. Uh, we did electron diffraction as well as uh, imaging. You can see each each point is an atom, uh, gallium atom or oxygen atom. Uh, you can see this. Okay, uh, I need to go. Uh, this is the A from which we have from uh, Korean make XC uh, zero seven. 
uh, you may be knowing uh, unlike uh, electron uh, imaging in SEM or uh, TEM this is uh, uh, cantilever tip moving on the surface with the force you try to see uh, topography of the surface right so this is the principle involved so it the uh, tip is made of either uh, silicon or titanium or uh, uh, tungsten okay uh, so you try to move over the surface with the force you try to see the surface you can see uh, different forms of uh, force microscopy atomic force microscopy magnetic force microscopy and different forms scanning tunneling or capacitance right spin dissolved and uh, uh, you can clearly see whatever surface topography right so there is no vacuum involved there is no processing involved unlike in a scanning electron microscopy or a transmission electron microscopy you can see the surface clearly with the atomic force a form right these are some of the thing atom resolved and uh, uh, this is biological sample uh, this is a protein sample okay okay so this is a simple uh, uh, crystalline surface uh, which which is which give you clean uh, surface this is a roughness measurement of the same sample right this is our biological samples different samples which which has seen uh, this is a blood sample blood sample on a glass plate right you can uh, identify using a form so <coughs> even if the surface is not clean you, you can treat the surface either by uh, processing or thing and you can make a uh, very good surface thing this is oxygen covered silver you can see evolution of uh, atoms of uh, uh, silver with treatment of surface this is an a form <coughs> yeah the this a form which we, we have is uh, coupled with uh, indenting nano indenting so we can indent mechanically indent it and we can see uh, how uh, cracks are formed and what is the surface properties or mechanical uh, properties we can have different indenting uh, indenter also wickers indenter brunel indenter bekovich noop but we have only wickers uh, and noop indenter in our uh, machine and uh, we try to study the mechanical properties of a material also using this uh, coupled with a form <coughs> so as i said uh, uh, in the spectroscopic we have uh, dynamic uh, light scattering equipment uh, from which we try to uh, find the size of the particle as well as try to uh, understand the stability of the particles right how uh, right this is a simple thing we try to uh, make a solution right and uh, the laser which which is uh, from the machine goes there it gets uh, scattered light scattered and try to observe uh, through a director when the size of the particle is closer to uh, uh, wavelength of uh, laser right we try to uh, have a size thing and uh, we try to have a, a zeta potential measurement with adsorption uh, zeta potential measurement and we try to find the stability the zeta potential is nothing but when the zeta potential is low all right so the dielectric uh, layer is more stable and the zeta potential is high right it is not so stable so depending on the value of uh, zeta potential we try to find the stability of a particle in addition to the size also we have a ftr machine the speciality of the ma machine is that we can have uh, imaging also usually the, uh, the functional groups of materials all right are uh, measured with respect to peaks or absorptions or transmission but here we can map it in a mapping you can see the imaging uh, we have photoluminescence uh, atomic uh, absorption wherein you can uh, identify different elements present in th uh, the medium uh, through a solution yeah th th this is about raman uh, so when a light incident on the material right uh, there will be reflection absorbance uh, or luminescence but most of the most of the uh, processes are elastic uh, process which which gives you whatever light goes in light comes out only some uh, part when light goes in right uh, the wavelength of light either increase or decrease depending on uh, the material source which gives you uh, strokes and anti strokes lines uh, which, which is called raman uh, scattering okay so this raman uh, raman is a uh, effect right you maybe uh, every one of you knowing which, which was discovered by uh, uh, sasivir raman right will give you the structural and the stability of uh, the materials okay we have the raman 
at our uh, center uh, wherein we, we, we can study wha whatever samples, you know, solid sample, liquid samples and uh, different uh, samples. Uh, so we can identify different modes of the material and based on the different uh, uh, vibrational uh, modes, we try to image it and we also record it, uh, the stability of uh, materials. Okay. So symmetric or asymmetric or bending or wagging or twisting, everything, uh, rocking, uh, we can see using uh, a Raman uh, spectra. Uh, of late, Raman imaging is also used. Raman imaging, it is not so easy to have a Raman imaging. We have to make use of surface enhanced Raman or uh, resonant Raman. Based on uh, data from that, we can uh, make uh, uh, coherent anti-stokes Raman spectroscopy, CARS, and then image it. You can see the simple uh, carbon nanotube, which is observed through SEM or uh, TEM and uh, 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 very good imaging using Raman, Raman spectroscopy. So this is non-destructive, non-destructive and there is no need for vacuum or uh, any other uh, thing, but you can image it easily with the cars, coherent anti-strokes Raman spectroscopy. Yeah, this is one of the classic imaging from uh, Raman uh, about a <coughs> live cell imaging, right? Uh, th this is from again, coherent anti-strokes Raman uh, imaging uh, process. You can image everything, uh, insulating, conducting, uh, bio or uh, any media material. Okay, uh, I think uh, oh. this is again uh, Raman spectra, wherein uh, this is uh, uh, fuel, uh, calcium carbonate, the uh, content of fuel is mainly calcium carbonate. You can identify uh, the original pair and the fake one uh, using Raman spectra. You can see only one peak per uh, pair of uh, calcium carbonate uh, at a Raman shift of uh, close to 1000 centimeter inverse. But a five fake one, you can see uh, different uh, peaks, different Raman shifts all over uh, the range from 100 to 3000 uh, centimeter inverse. Right? You can identify <coughs> the pure material with impure uh, and also the stability of the material right, using Raman spectroscopy. Uh, so, right, I introduced uh, the materials from Stone Age to Information Age and then uh, I uh, discussed uh, <coughs> about uh, the commercial uh, applications of different materials starting from carbon to silicon to sapphire, titanium oxide and other oxides and also I explained uh, the facilities or characterization tools, right? From powder XRD to HR XRD to SEM, TEM, and also spectroscopic UV visible, Raman, and other spectroscopic tools available at uh, our center. Okay. <coughs> uh, I think uh, this is the last slide. Okay. Okay. I have 10 more minutes. Uh, if I have 5 minutes, I can show some. Uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, if it is interesting, <laughs> okay, ten minutes, right? I can show the uh, videos. Uh, I try to highlight the some of the videos are from uh, uh, only uh, internet, right? Most of the videos are which which uh, are from our own uh, facilities. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, this is yeah, this you can put it. Uh, Talca, the uh, last bottom one, Talca, Talca exfoliation, the next one, next one, yeah. This is about exfoliation of uh, graphene, uh, how one can uh, get uh, graphene from graphite by a, a simple electrochemical uh, process. Uh, just forward it. Yeah, this is a graphite, right? Known uh, quantity of graphite. Uh, little bit forward. Uh, yeah, it is uh, two electrodes. This is uh, anode and cathode, right? This electrolyte is an ionic solution. Uh, you apply, but the voltage is very high, more than 5 kilovolt. If you apply, right, you try to fill up. Uh, the <coughs> ionic liquid try to react with the graphite, purify the graphite, and try to. Uh, get rid of uh, whatever 
functional groups within the graphene layers all right so you try to get uh, just forward it so once you filter it right you will have a simple two dimensional graphene uh, layers so graphite is stacked layers of graphene in between functional groups right so once you have a graphite by electrochemical process you try to have exfoliation or removing of uh, functional groups so that you try to get the graphene okay uh, okay that is graphene oh. the sixth one S sixth next one yeah so this is again a simple uh, process graphene uh, by thermal process you take a graphite and you try to pour in uh, uh, concentrated uh, uh, acid uh, this is acid right this combustion reaction this is not a controlled reaction but this is again from uh, uh, literature you can see evolution of uh, everything is graphene everything is graphene but you have to uh, make uh, sheets of graphene and you have to go for laboratory uh, application so graphene is very light very light the density is very low compared to graphite right so graphite concentrated acid either sulfuric acid or nitric acid right you try to have a combustion reaction try to get a, a graphene okay that's next video please uh, yeah so this is our <coughs> one which is i said uh, about a few grams of uh, seed carrying a lot of uh, uh, weight by proper necking this is uh, optimized uh, uh, growth right the top is seed the bottom is uh, grown uh, uh, crystal right uh, but if you do not have that optimized one you can't carry the crystal uh, below the thing okay uh, so next one is so it necking uh, uh, seeding seeding is also right so this is where the temperature is 2000 degree celsius temperature is 2000 degree celsius in the oxygen atmosphere right the top is feed the bottom is uh, seed right slowly we try to melt it we try to make uh, seeding i said you know the seeding is very very important then only you can you can make it right uh, surface tension and other problems you have to make it and you have to grow uh, just forward it huh? the seeding will happen only at the last minute yeah so it is a very very slow process seeding process the next slide i said detaching you know uh growth uh ah, the first one detachment okay all right seeding growth equally important is detachment if you are no proper detachment right everything will come out and uh, everything will go off right right just forward it yeah okay so because uh, whatever defects you know defects in it is carried from uh, seed whatever is growing so if the seed is of not good quality right the grown one may not be good quality similarly if your detachment is not perfect right whatever uh, end part right it will go uh, with more defects okay so next uh, maybe final uh, video this is sol gel i think uh, okay so this is again uh, graphitic with uh, uh, whatever uh, controlled uh, process right you can see uh, graphitic powder is taken here and diluted uh, sulfuric uh, acid just forward it uh, evolution of graphene again from simple combustion uh, process yeah so uh, the temperature you, you can see it is more than 600 degrees celsius right uh because of uh, reaction it comes out as a graphene okay yeah please
Okay. Yeah, uh, now up to you for any questions or clarifications. Questions? Sir, you mentioned thermoelectric device. Yes. Uh, what is the maximum temperature we can withstand on that particular device? Mm, there are, there are uh, three different categories of uh, materials. So one is low temperature materials, which okay. comes below 300 degree uh, Celsius. Okay. Mid temperature materials, which is between 300 degree to uh, 600 degree. Okay. Uh, there are high temperature materials, which is 1500 degrees, okay. right, up to 1500 degrees. Right, uh, silicon germanium based devices comes under 1500. Mm. Right, bismuth telluride, deltoride in the mid range. Right, some oxides uh, in the low range. So, so whatever waste heat comes out, you know, yes, yes. If, if it is around 300 degrees, these okay. materials can be used, it will convert the thermal energy into electrical energy. Yes, okay, this lead telluride, bismuth cellular telluride, or bismuth telluride. Right, this temperature, this is between 300 to uh, 900 degrees Celsius. These N-type and P-type uh, materials, right, if you are making a thermoelectric generator, okay. right, if the heat is between 300 degree to 900 degree, they would convert the heat energy into electrical energy. Okay. Uh, bismuth based or lead based. The silicon germanium alloy, which will be sent up to 1500. Okay. That maximum temperature material is not generally available in market, sir. We Ah, uh, yeah. The problem is that preparation of the materials, right? Okay. If it is low temperature, it is easily <coughs> you can prepare because you have to prepare N type as well as P type. Okay. And this if it is on the same material, it is fine. If you have even different materials, right, you have to at the particular temperature test to withstand, you know. Mainly silicon germanium alloy, uh, which is very difficult, 0.5, 0.5 uh, percentage of silicon and uh, germanium. Uh, and also it has to be prepared in a uh, crystalline way, not in an uh, amorphous way. Uh, process it's not so easy uh, to prepare and also you, you, you have to accommodate n type and p type with dopants okay. but mid range mid range is, is commercially available i have shown you know lead telluride bismuth telluride bismuth cellular telluride they are commercially available thermoelectric generators as well as refrigerators mm -hmm. based on these materials low temperature and high temperature still uh, on the laboratory scale okay okay thank you sir not any questions Ah, uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, I showed uh, uh, a process silver uh, assembly. Right? You, you can make a colloidal of uh, silver with the proper uh, solvent. Right? Once you put it onto the glass plate, right, it try to arrange itself as a self assembly on the glass plate. Right? Simple drying process, you can remove whatever uh, uh, colloidal thing. You can make it only silver or any, any elemental. So, but you have to find the optimum solvent or colloidal thing and then whatever the substrate you want, you can put it and lift off. So, the self-assembly is an easy process, very, very easy process. So, we, we if you have want to have multiple layers, right, multiple lift-off process, you can have a multiple layer. But simple coating uh, on the two or nano is not so uh, easy easy process because once you give some kind of energy uh, you try to agglomerate and you try to grow as a bigger grain rather than uh, uh, limiting its size to nano all right uh, simple process wet chemical or uh, uh, self assembly process you can have multiple layers uh, of metals or metal oxides um, sir is there uh, uh, any work going on on light weighting uh, for example in uh, internal combustion engines um, oh yeah. um, now, s towards CO2 reduction, uh, many OEs are working on the light weighting. Means the, see the, if you take uh, IC engines, the major part is cast iron. So, cast iron is the major. So, uh, uh, almost 60 to 70 percentage of the weight of an um, engine, it's with a cast iron material. So, is there any uh, light weighting uh, material developments, anything going on? Uh, you, yeah, yeah. Usually, this is polymers, uh, some kind of uh, polymers, composite uh, composites. Uh, uh, they are uh, attempting. Uh, again, everything on uh, 
laboratory scale. Uh, on a commercial scale, it may take some time. Uh, Another question, uh, say for uh, the latest alternate fuels, the hydrogen is one of the combustible fuel what we are now yeah. working on. So the compatibility of hydrogen on the materials, for example, the hydrogen embrittlement, the uh, hydrogen presence of hydrogen in the uh, materials. So any facilities available here um, to study on uh, hydrogen presence in the materials? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, th I think now, uh, recently with the uh, RUSA, uh, this electrical vehicle uh, group, they are procuring uh, hydrogen sensing, with sensors, hydrogen sensing as well as quantifying what our uh, hydrogen uh, at uh, Anaya University, at uh, IIT Madras, they have very good uh, uh, facility to measure uh, uh, or sense hydrogen in any me medium. But it's not so easy uh, because w whatever uh, hydrogen uh, from the fuel cell, right? You, you have to take care of uh, uh, oxygen problem, right? Even if a small trace of oxygen in it is, it, it will burst off. So uh, uh, the hydrogen, you have to purify it without any oxygen, then only you can sense it. Yes, okay. Uh, if you have still any questions during tea break, uh, you can ask uh, questions. Uh, Thanks, sir. Thanks for oh, uh, the sir. wonderful presentation. In fact, uh, our uh, department and uh, your center uh, both have a strong relationship uh, in the field of uh, nanomaterials. Okay. And as you said, uh, uh, almost all the technology evolved, but the performance enhancement of uh, any technology which depends on the material development, like as uh, one of uh, uh, the attendee asked about the temperature, right? So we can go for any temperature. Now the technology is evolved, but the problem is material withstanding temperature. So beyond a certain temperature for mechanical application, more than 1500 degrees centigrade uh, standing temperature, right, the material which is not available. So the uh, vast uh, uh, research work going on as uh, the composite material in the domain, right, and of course the nano uh, coating, these are all useful to improve the performance. Uh, so many research activity which is going on in various domain, uh, not only in uh, core engineering, uh, civil, mechanical and other things, uh, even the electronic system also. Uh, the function of electronic materials uh, greatly depends on uh, uh, the material uh, heat uh, removal uh, capability, right? So many of the system which fails uh, because of the improper uh, material design. So this is one of the paramount importance for all the engineers, this topic. So I hope uh, uh, the attendees uh, would have gained uh, much knowledge in the field of uh, materials uh, and it's a characterization study. Thank you, sir. Thank you for awesome. your Thank you very much uh, for your kind okay, introduction. Sir, also, thank you, ma'am, for uh, inviting. As a talk uh, of appreciation, may I request our director uh, to present a moment to, to our speaker. Oh, that's, 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 thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh.